it's Friday, April the 29th. Welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Ubi Wabu. More companies released their first quarter earnings as Seplat, a petroleum development company, reports a shave in profit after tax of $2.3 million. And Africa records highest levels of private equity exits in 2015. Plus, China raises the exchange rate for its currency, the yuan, by 0.56% against the U.S. dollars. We'll begin with some earnings reports. Seplat Petroleum Development Company has reported a loss before tax of 2.98 billion naira for its 2016 first quarter result, in contrast to a profit of 4.83 billion naira recorded in the same period last year. After tax profit also came in the red to 4.48 billion naira in the quarter under review against 4.87 billion naira reported last year. It was also a lackluster performance for the oil exploration company as its revenue fell to 16.59 billion naira in comparison to 25.56 billion naira under the same period. Julius Berger, a construction company listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, has also reported some negative first quarter results, posted a drop in profit after tax. Now, the company's profit after tax stood at 251.2 million naira compared to the 1 billion naira recorded in the comparable period of 2015. The company's revenue also dropped from 43.4 billion naira in 2015 to 28.7 billion naira in 2016. Amazon.com Incorporated on Thursday reported profit and revenue that blew past analyst expectations, sending its shares soaring in after hours trading and demonstrating the growing market power of its core retail business and new cloud services division. The results are a sharp contrast to the disappointing fourth quarter Amazon reported in January, which renewed worries among some shareholders about the company's comparatively thin profit margins. Amazon's performance also assuaged concerns about a broader slowdown among tech and internet companies after Apple, Microsoft and Intel all reported disappointing earnings. Meanwhile, a billionaire investor, Carl Icahn, has sold his holding in Apple over concerns about the tech firm's prospects in China. A report saying Mr. Icahn made $2 billion from selling his stake in Apple at one point last year. He owned 53 million shares valued at $6.5 billion. He started buying Apple shares in the third quarter of 2013 when they were trading at around $68 per, per share. On Thursday, shares closed at $94.83, down 3% for the day. And China has raised the exchange rate for its currency, the yuan, by 0.56% against the U.S. dollar from the previous day. The Central Bank People's Bank of China fixed the yuan rate at 6.4589 to the U.S. dollar on Friday. That is the biggest increase in nearly 11 years. Market reaction to the move, however, has been muted. The Shanghai Composite Index had lost 9.06 points by midday. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index fell 288.56 points. South Korea's Kospi Index closed down 0.3%. The region's biggest market, Japan, was shut on Friday for a national holiday. The benchmark Nikkei 225 Index ended the shortened trading week down 5%. Well, lots of company news coming in both in Europe and U.S. The U.S. yesterday posted a disappointing growth figures, but the opposite came from the Eurozone today. Now, let's bring in DWTV, Channels TV correspondent at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Orich Bart, to make sense out of those news coming in. Good afternoon, Orich. Thank you for joining us. Now, Orich, growth figures... You. You're welcome. Now, growth figures for the United States were disappointing yesterday, but the opposite is coming from the Eurozone today. How fast did the Eurozone grow and how did the markets react to that? Yes, uh, Jimmy, I, I'm hearing some voices in the background uh, that are overlying your, your question, but I think you asked how was the uh, U.S. growth uh, 
performing and right. influencing the stock market and how was eurozone growth impacting the right. market right and uh, for the United States uh, it's a clear yes uh, it's the major influence uh, this Friday along with the central bank decision in the Fed uh, not to change interest rates and to release a communique that was puzzling uh, to say the least to the, to the people here in the market, not offering much guidance uh, in the look ahead. And uh, yesterday afternoon when uh, U.S. Uh, gross domestic product uh, came in at 0.5 percent, uh, much lower uh, than the qu quarter before, uh, that dampened the mood and that continues today. And even though the Eurozone growth is, is much better than expected, 0.6 percent, uh, the 19 Eurozone countries uh, grew on average uh, in the first quarter, about double what was expected. Uh, it's not able to uh, pull the share prices here at the moment, at least up uh, before the weekend. Orange, lots of um, company news pouring in, both in the United States and in Europe. Now, in Germany, some real heavyweights had news for investors, BASP and Bayer, for example. What did their CEOs tell the investors? Yes, BASF, uh, the world's largest chemical company, Ludwigshafen, not far from Frankfurt, about an hour's drive. Uh, that share is really going up uh, because uh, they sound a little bit more upbeat about the path ahead. The first quarter, though, was not really anything to write home about. Uh, there was a big profit jump uh, when you look at the net profit, uh, but this because of uh, favorable uh, tax conditions. When you look at what the company made through its business operating profit, uh, it actually went down. Down. and um, the company puts this up to uh, the oil and gas business the low, low oil price not only impacting many emerging market countries like uh, Nigeria for example but also a company like BASF which has a heavy investment in the oil and gas uh, business and the and the basic chemical uh, business which is also big with BASF also not performing all that well uh, still the sh share up buyer uh, another story, the annual general meeting today, the last one for the CEO, Maureen Deckers. Uh, he's leaving uh, after this uh, annual general meeting and he uh, wrapped up his six years at the helm and it was clear that uh, with this wrap up, of course, uh, people were able to think back what was Bayer six years ago and what was it today. It's a, today a totally different company, much more focused and uh, more profitable and the share price also up. Now, you just talked about um, their CEO stepping down after this annual meeting. His successor takes over Monday. But this is not the only company where there will be changeover. Who is getting a new boss and what does that mean for the companies involved? Yeah, there are uh, four others, uh, indeed. Uh, there's uh, MAC, a pharmaceutical company, and also a chemical company. Uh, there's Henkel, also a, a chemical company and consumer goods company. Uh, there's the Commerzbank, Germany's second largest. And there's also Adidas. Uh, now, Henkel and Adidas, that's an interesting story because uh, there you have uh, one CEO who's retiring after basically quite a successful time, uh, decades, uh, at the helm of Adidas, Herbert Heine, and he's being replaced by... Uh, Kaspar Rorstedt, who until now was CEO of Henkel, and Rorstedt, it seems, just thought it was time for a change of uh, change of view, and uh, so he's leaving Henkel, where he also uh, propelled the company forward uh, to try to do more for Adidas. Commerzbank, of course, um, the CEO, only 52 years old, leaving after eight years uh, at the helm. He also deciding to do something new. Uh, the Commerzbank still not really finding a clear direction where it wants to go. A bank still looking for a strategy, an internal candidate replacing uh, Martin Blessing there. And when you look at Merck, a very successful company, the CEO leaving uh, at basically the height of the company's success and being replaced by an internal candidate who previous led, uh, previously led the pharmaceutical division. Well, thank you very much for those updates, Orich. Thank you for your time and do have a wonderful weekend. Orich Bart, DWTV, Channel TV correspondent, reporting there from Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Well, African private equity firms cash in on investments with South Africa, Egypt, Nigeria and Kenya accounting for two-thirds of the exits. Details in a moment. Do stay with us.